Hey, 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 I'm going to show you my advanced workflow in Stable Diffusion, something that I've learned with a lot of experimentation and a little help from my friends Healy and Maui and everyone else in my Discord. I'm going to teach you how you can create amazing images in Stable Diffusion as well, with more control and better quality than, well, almost anyone else in any application. So let's dive straight in and I'll show you as well. Now I had a hard time getting the kids to sleep before recording this and I don't know what to do. Are they supposed to go to jail for resisting arrest? All right, so I'm going to be showing you my workflow with ControlNet and um, doing multiple people and just uh, doing advanced images and, and getting great results in general. So I have prepared a ControlNet input, which is an image from the series The Last of Us. I'm not going to spoil anything, don't worry. I'm going to take this, I'm going to input into ControlNet down here. Now, if you don't know how to install ControlNet, check my previous video where I go through it in detail. I'll also put a link in the description below for that. So I dragged it in here and I made sure that this image is 512 by 768. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to do the same here. Oh, actually, this needs to be the other way. So we have width 768. And enable. And I want to use the canny. Actually, what I do is I mix between the canny and depth and I try what's best for the particular image I have. And it's always a little different. I usually start at weight one and uh, might go lower or higher depending on the results. And I start hashing out lots of images with Euler A at about 25. And then I move on to SD Keras. But uh, let's start here. And then I, I'm currently using the Protogen model and I'm gonna load a preset that I have. And this is a friend of mine named Healy who has written this preset. So I'm just gonna add in here. We want, uh, I think I'm gonna remake this into a sort of a Blade Runner futuristic sci-fi thing. So I've written here, man, woman, and futuristic Blade Runner sci-fi neon city. I'm going to up the weight and do this by holding control and arrow up. And then I'm going to just try one image at first. You can see here we got a lot of the detail. And I'm fairly happy with the settings. Uh, don't mind the faces for now. We're going to fix those later. So just, uh, we just uh, want like a general composition. So... Now that I know that the settings are all right, I'm going to put it to like here, like nine images, and then I'm going to generate. I'm going to speed this part up. And now we have a lot of images to choose from. The people are generally the same. What I'm looking for is the composition in the background and if we have an interesting image, because uh, I want uh, to use the colors to keep working with this in image to image. So I'm thinking uh, either the top on the first one here is pretty good. It's a lot of colors up there. Now this the light here is messing up the backpack, but it's not a, of a big concern. Um, I also like what's going on down here because of the big backlight going on there. And also this with the purple is very nice. But uh, I'm going to try this one down here. So take this and then you're going to send that to image to image. That will save all your settings. And now we're going to change to SD Keras. We're going to up this to about 40 steps and we're going to increase this. Now, what I prefer to do is use an aspect ratio calculator, because if you just, you need to have the same aspect ratio when you, well, we don't need to, but the image will be a little better if you do. Now I have 512 by 768, which is an aspect, uh, well, the other way around actually, 768 by 512. So we have an aspect ratio of three to two. We're gonna double this, so this would be 1024, and then we get the other number, which is 1536. So we're gonna up this to 1024, and this to 1536. We're gonna leave restore faces, tiling everything, I'm going to lower the denoising strength to about 0.6. And I want to run this in a couple of batches. Well, first, let's run one and see if we need to use control that. Now, this turned out pretty well. Even the faces are all right, actually. Uh, what I usually do is I do this with a large number of batches, maybe three, four at a time, and then 
keep going until I find something I want. So I'm going to do that actually just for the sake of this video, even though I'm fairly happy with the results here. So we're going to change this to four. And I'm actually going to lower a little bit because I had a very long time rendering this. And as I'm recording this at the same time, my computer didn't really like that. So I'm going to go to 832 and I'm going to sh shake back here. 832, that would be 1248 for the other one. Now we don't have exactly that, so I'm just going to stick to 1216. And let's run this again. And the progress rendering is much better now, even though I am recording. So now I can actually keep the recording going as it's rendering. Now with every new image that you get here from the four that we wanted, you'll get some variations. And that's what we're looking for. We want the variations just to find an image that we like. So now we're finished. And we have four images to choose from. As you can see, there are some variations in each image. The backpack here changes a lot. This doesn't seem to be a backpack at all. And this, um, well, I'm not sure. We have some tech on the arm here and here, which I think is, is very cool. And I personally like what's going on with this image. So I'm going to stick with it, even though the backpack is a little wonky here. It's open. So, I mean, we could keep going do more batches, but I'm fairly happy with this. Now, the reason that we're doing a larger resolution here in the image to image step and not in the beginning is that it takes such a long time for the first step that we did previously, which was the text to image here was a much smaller resolution in Euler A. And that way you can hash out a lot of images quickly and find the composition. Then when you've found the composition, you move on and do what we did here and improve on the image. Now we're going to improve even further. And in this step, we're going to in paint. Now the image that we have here is fairly good already, but you can see here in the eyes that it's not perfect and the same here. So what we do first is we're going to send this to extras. And if you want to, you can upscale four times, but I'm going to stick to two for now. I'm not, not going to bother with any of the upscalers, but um, pick the one that you prefer. I know some people with, that use this style a lot, use the Langshaws. I've used uh, ESR Gen a lot previously for paintings. Sween IR, for example, is very good with um, intricate details, but can be very intense. It can be, get too, uh, too sharp, if you know. But uh, let's upscale this. Then we're going to send it to InPaint. And now we're going to improve on the parts that we need to fix, which would be, well, actually eyes here, we're going to inpaint the whole face just to get a higher resolution on it. Take this part, we're just going to say man face. And of course, you can make a much more detailed prompt if you're looking for something specific in the face. And now we're in painting here. It's important for this step, if you're doing what I'm doing, you want, you know, this is a face on top of a face. I just want it better than I'm using original, then it takes the value that's below. If you take latent noise, for example, that's good if you want to replace something because then you get new noise that Stable Diffusion can work with. But for now, we're going to use original and we're going to inpaint at full resolution. And we're going to keep the same 40 steps with Keras. And we're just going to leave everything here except the batch count. I'm going to lower that to two. And the denoising strength, it depends how much you want the image changed. So if you got an image that you're fairly happy with already, you could keep this lower. Uh, I want the face changed quite a bit. So I'm going to keep it to 0.6. But I don't want a completely new, new thing there. So let's generate this. And you can see you get a close up here. And that's because we checked in the box here in paint at full resolution. And instantly before it's even finished, you can see that the eyes are much better and the face is generally more detailed than what we had in the beginning. And you can actually see it compared with the ear here and the hair, which is still low res in comparison. Now you could repaint the whole head. That way you would just paint over the hair here and the ear as well. Let's check and see what we got. So this is the first one and this is the second one. And I'm going to go here with the first one. 
So I'm just going to take this, I'm going to drag it to the left, and I'm going to press the little thing here to remove our mask. And then we are going to continue with the woman here, or what was actually the child in uh, the original. It doesn't look like a child anymore, it's just a short, short person. So I'm thinking we could try to make this into a robot. I'm going to change the prompt to woman android robot face. And I'm going to up the strength a little bit because we want some more changes now. And we can see that we have a robot face emerging here. And the detail and resolution is just stunning. Just imagine that this is a small part of this huge image. Now let's see the results. The first one here and the second one. The second one is more resemblant to the original human. It has some hair, but still some mechanical details in the back. And this is a full-on robot. We're going to take the robot here. And next up, I'm thinking we're going to change the little displays or controls here on his arm. And again, we're going to drop this here. Press this to remove the mask. We're going to draw here. Let's try something like display control unit. Now, I don't know what that is, but uh, we'll find out. And we don't want a lot of denoising here. We still want to retain what's going on. We basically just want to improve on what's here. Most of the stuff is here. So it's just gonna basically upscale and make it better. I think this one has some great potential. I like that the letters, letters here, the N and Y, now they are almost perfect. Now they don't really mean anything, but for the sake of the image, maybe it's the name of the control unit or the name of the company, doesn't matter. So let's take this and see. Yeah, I think this is super cool. And here you can see our final image. Now, what we're seeing here is a large image, and this is just at 59% of its original size. Now, the actual size of this is about 2,400 pixels by 1,600 pixels. So we can see if we zoom in here to 100%, it's a huge image and you can see where we inpainted. The detail here is amazing as well as here and the robot android face here. Now you can keep adding and inpainting as much as you want. I think this is a great way for you to get great quality and large images. A lot of people just try to use a large resolution from the start and that's not a very effective workflow. I think doing this together with ControlNet will yield you the absolute best pictures available as of right now. Now this might change tomorrow. You know how it is with AI art and uh, the progress. I hope you learned something and you can use this in your workflow. And thanks to uh, Healy and uh, Maui for helping out with uh, the channel and images in general. If you enjoy this content, like and subscribe if you wanna. I have lots of videos and tutorials on AI art. As always, have a good one. See ya.